production facilities and control. Now, when you are doing production of parental preparation, there are some unique facilities that should be there in your industry. And there should be some controls which should be done, which are again unique. Okay. So these controls or these facilities are not that much required when you are doing your uh, tablet manufacturing or when you are doing the uh, capsule manufacturing. Okay. That time they not, may not be required. But when you are doing uh, production facility, uh, when you are doing production of your injectables or your parental products, then there are some facilities and controls which have been required. Why do you require them? Because you want your parental product to be free from pyrogen. You want your parental product to be free from microorganism or it should be free even from the particulate matter. Because any of this, if it, in, if it goes inside the systemic circulation, then it can be life-threatening. Hence, you have to provide adequate optimum production facilities and you have to control the environment that you have to control the air, you have to control the temperature, you have to control the humidity, you have to control the pressure, okay? So that there is no contaminant that is going to go into your product. So you build into the quality of your product. You build into the quality of your product first by keeping your environment, wherever you are manufacturing your product, totally clean. Okay, so that there is no contamination or there is no cross contamination of your product. Moving ahead, let us see what are the objectives, needs, or reasons for providing good facilities. Okay, we provide good facilities so that we can control air, we can control temperature. We can control humidity and we can control pressure. We provide good facilities, okay, so that we can make the product free from pyrogen. We can make the product free from microorganisms and free from particulate matter. Okay, we provide the facilities so that we can have adequate and separate areas for each and every activity. Maybe testing, maybe filling, maybe manufacturing, maybe packaging, labeling, okay. Uh, and and other other things should be adequate and it should have a separate area right we are providing facilities okay with the objective that uh, there should be no material or personal okay flow should not be hampered the design should be such that the material and personal should be very proper so that you can maximize the efficiency also and you can minimize the product mix up also okay then you should be uh, you are providing this facility so that you can satisfy the conditions which are given by fda which are given by who which are given by fda uh, us fda right then and then only the other you will be able to manufacture the product and sell it to the other countries for example if you want to sell the product to us you want to export the product to us then your factory should be us fda approved there are many countries who take the products only from who purchase or you allow the export of the products only from the man, manufacturing areas which are approved by WHO. Okay, for selling the products in uh, in Indian market, you require to satisfy the condition of FDA. That is the good manufacturing practices. You have to satisfy that, and these conditions are satisfied only and only if you give proper facilities. So giving facilities is also important in order to satisfy the norms of the different different agencies. Okay. Let us move further with the facilities that have been uh, that you require to provide. The first facility that you require to provide is with the terms of building walls, floors, furniture, ceilings. Okay. So these are the things that you have to take care of. Now, these all you must have already studied in GMP, okay, when you have studied GMP, if, if GMP has already been completed, but completed by you, okay, in, uh, in jurisprudence, that Schedule M, if you have already completed that, completed Schedule M, then in Schedule M, all these things have been given to you. I'm just revising it with you. What are the facilities that are required for your 
panel preparation. When it comes to uh, uh, walls and floors of your buildings, okay, one thing that you have to see is that proper cleanliness is been maintained with these walls and cleanings, okay. So all area should be properly cleaned, okay. And near perfect cleanliness should be there in aseptic filling room. So all area should definitely be clean, but when it comes to aseptic filling room where the filling of the product has been carried out, and company of your product has been carried out, it should be totally, totally clean. Okay. Now surrounding areas, just for example, where packaging is happening, where labeling is happening, where uh, uh, the, what you call that, the goods are being stored. Okay. That can have a slightly lower, okay, cleanliness as compared to a septic room. But they all should be very, very clean in nature. Now, uh, what, is the, what is the main objective for this uh, cleanliness is in order to provide, prevent the contamination. So what you have to do is the sharp corners, whatever are there should be totally avoided. So the corners of the walls with the floors should not be sharp or with the walls with the, uh, with the ceiling should not be sharp because there are chances that dirt may accumulate at these corners, okay. As the dirt may accumulate in these corners, so it should not be sharp, but whereas it should be a little bit curved, okay. So at the curved surfaces, basically the washing becomes very easier and the dirt does not get accumulated, okay. So sharp corners between the floor, wall and ceiling should be avoided. Now when it comes to the floor, okay, flooring, the flooring should be smooth first of all and should be easy to clean. In order to make the flooring smooth and easy to clean, you can have something known as spray-on tiles. Okay. Spray-on tile is nothing but spraying or painting of your floors. Okay. With the help of ceramic epoxy finish. Okay. So you have to have an epoxy finish onto the floor. It can be there onto the walls also near about six feet from the floor. So on the floor and up to six feet up to the wall. This coating, epoxy coating should be there. It helps in what? It helps in washing, it helps in cleaning. But many a times, you know, this uh, uh, ceramic epoxy co coating, they usually get, you know, degraded or they get uh, peeled off with the, because of detergents and disinfectants, okay? So another method that can be used is by using ceramic plastic cement, okay? So if you use ceramic plastic cement, then this problem of degradation, wear off or peel does not happen. At the same time, the, the uh, floors, they become smooth and easy to clean. They are very best for the floors. Another method that can be applied is, you know, use of vinyl sheets. Okay. Wherever the, uh, uh, what you call that, the traffic that is the traveling the, uh, of the people, etc. are less. Okay. Wherever there is, wherever there is less heavy traffic in the areas, Vinyl sheet, uh, you must have seen vinyl sheets which are applied at home also, isn't it? So these are the sheets which are uh, applied onto the floor and they are applied with the help of the adhesives, right? So this is the care that you're going to take for building wall. This is the care that you're going to take for your um, uh, floors, okay? Then another uh, care that you're going to take for your floor is about the joints. So you have one tile and then you have the another tile which is being place near it, right? So you have to take care that in between these two tiles, whatever the joint is, this joint is carefully sealed with the help of epoxy coating. coating. If it is not sealed, you can, you can see at your home also. Now also you can see in between these two tiles, whatever joint is there, this joint, there is a dirt that is sitting in this joint, isn't it? So this should be properly and carefully sealed. You should give special attention to the ceilings also, whereby there should not be dirt accumulation onto the ceiling and to be cleaned regularly, right? Now, uh, if you are uh, 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 regarding glass, okay, regarding the furniture, in the, if you consider about the glass, then glass should be used, okay? In between, whenever you have uh, the, uh, what you call that, the room inside that you should have glass which has been placed over there. Now, whenever you're using glass, basically they are used for, you know, for uh, having the better uh, view or for light, etc. They are being placed, isn't it? 
so for partitioning for the view of operation for better lighting this glass have been placed no problem in using the glass but you have to take care that these glass should be properly sealed so that no dirt etc comes from the joint inside the room so if it is not properly sealed then from the uh, from the corners the dirt might enter inside the aseptic area so it should be properly sealed care should be taken that it should be properly sealed uh, furnitures again are integral part of any manufacturing area okay or filling area or aseptic area you should take care that they are non porous in nature okay then uh, they are made up of hard surface material preferably stainless steel okay so furniture that have been placed over there should be made up of stainless steel again they should be easy to clean easy to wash okay and they should be non porous in nature moving ahead now this is all regarding the uh, building facilities that we have seen moving ahead to the pressure gradient now uh, you have to maintain a proper pressure gradient if you see the production area the production area is divided into three zones it is divided into white zone gray zone and black zone now what is the white zone white zone is the area where the final uh, uh, filling of the parental takes place so the compounding uh, etc it takes place in this area okay so it requires the highest pressure why do you require highest pressure over here so that it is not contaminated with the microorganisms okay then you have the second area which is known as the which is known as the gray zone okay now what is gray zone in gray zone what you carry out is weighing dissolution and filtration is usually carried out in the gray zone the next zone that you have is black zone whatever whatever storage is there okay then uh, whatever change rooms etc they are all in the black zone right so this is the worst area from the point of view of contamination so the maximum contamination you can see in the black zone area now what you have to do uh, what you have to see is in the white zone you have the highest pressure whereas in the black zone you have the lowest pressure so this uh, uh, so this uh, black zone should be present at one corner whereas this uh, black white zone should be placed at other corners okay and in between you should have a gray zone so the person who is traveling okay should enter from this black zone into the gray zone and then to the white zone and in the similar manner the pressure gradient should be created so this black zone is having to have a lowest uh, pressure gradient or uh, lowest pressure followed by the gray zone we will be have, having some little higher higher uh, uh, pressure further higher pressure further higher pressure and then this white zone is going to have the highest pressure okay so proper pressure gradient should be there inside your premises from lowest to the highest from back zone to the white zone okay and as i shown you uh, told you that uh, entry of people should be from black to gray to white area okay so maintaining of pressure gradient is also very important that is another facility that you have to provide in your manufacturing area okay in your sorry in in your parental area parental manufacturing section right now next thing is what regarding the uh, preventing of the contamination and the cross contamination you have to take care that there is no contamination as well as there is no cross contamination now what is cross contamination cross contamination is nothing but spreading of your micro spreading of your dirt spreading of your pathogens from one area to another area from one substance to another substance from one person to another person okay so that is nothing but cross contamination from one equipment to another equipment that is nothing but the cross contamination so in order to avoid the cross com contamination the first thing that you have to do is you have to separate the manufacturing area from the equipment cleaning and labeling area so each and every area should be separated so if the areas are separated then the problem of con contamination is been reduced the next important thing that you have to uh, do is that the entry of equipment and material must be through air locks 
are you aware what airlock is has anybody taught you about airlocks have you seen airlocks not seen but we've been taught about it you have been taught about it so what are airlocks you have a area from this one room you enter into the other room and from the other room you enter into the third room so what you do is once you enter from you open this door in between and from this area you enter into the second area into the second room so what you do is then you lock this room are you getting me so you lock this area and and then you open this door unless and until you lock this door this door is not going to get opened okay are you understanding so you come from from this surface from you are standing over here you open the door you open this door okay and after opening the door you come to this area when you come once you come to this area you close this door right so now the contamination is not going to flow from here to here directly okay but you open this door over here from here to enter over here and then you close this door so the traveling of contaminant from this area to this area does not take place so this is nothing but the air lock system <clears throat> so entry of any <clears throat> enter equipment or material must be through this air lock only now if the wall of sterile area is exposed to outdoor for example this is the wall of sterile area and here it is here there is a open ground okay you have open ground over here so it is exposed completely outwards then the care should be taken that no glass is provided over here to this window okay. are you getting me so no glass should be provided over here basically if the area is the sterile area if it is non sterile area then there is there is no problem in providing the glass but if it is sterile area then no glass should be provided if your wall is exposing the outdoor area in that case it should not be provided with glass etc okay you should also follow the sterile transfer procedure so all the material that have been all the material equipment should be transferred in a from one sterile area to another sterile area from one sterile container to another sterile container from a sterile container to a sterile pipe okay so a care should be taken so whenever you are uh, transferring anything any material any equipment whatever you are doing it should be through the sterile areas only through the sterile way uh, only in a sterile way only okay now you should you should also minimize the the material and personal there should not be a total always a continuous flow of product based material or personal because then what is going to happen that is also going to lead to cost contamination because one product uh, from one room to another again there is going to be cost contamination waste material flowing to the other contamination customers they are go moving uh, going uh, from one area to another area they are also going to catch carry contaminations along with them okay the next thing that you have to do is you have to maintain the uh, environmental quality and you have to maintain the control of it okay so the quality and uh, uh, control of environment that is the air the temperature humidity should be done that also avoids the cross contamination the next thing that you are going to do is you are going to carry out the sterilization of all the products and all the ingredients and you are also going to carry out the sterilization of container closure equipment and utensils okay the next uh, important facility that is required the uh, production area is the lightning fixtures okay now how should the lightning fixtures be okay the lightning fixture should be such that it reduces the flush with the ceiling so there is there should be no gap if you can see over here there should be no gap between the lightning fixture and the ceiling okay the areas which are having hipa filters on the ceiling if you can see over here now here you have hipa filters which are installed on the ceiling okay then in such cases the lamp be such that it should not disrupt the laminar airflow okay so tear up shape so this type of fittings will not be possible in that case tear up shape of fittings is been possible okay 
but it should not be such that it affects, for example, if you see over here, if these types of fittings are being done, then it may affect your, what you call the flow of uh, laminar airflow, it may be affecting. Hence, you have to take care that it does not, whatever lighting fixtures are there, it does not affect your uh, 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 disruption of your laminar airflow. And it should be giving, providing proper light, right? Moving ahead. The next thing that has been uh, important facility that is provided is the change room. Now, who said wants to enter inside the control area should pass through the change room only. Okay. So, passing of that person should be through change room only. Right. Now, the change room can be a single closed room, single small closed room or it can be an expensive multi-room also. Right. Now, the entry and exit in the change room is normally through the vestibules. So, if you want to pass from change room, okay, inside the control area, so from crane change room, you have to go inside the control area, it is through a vestibule. Vestibule is nothing but a, what you call that, a passage, okay. And these are also airlock. So, when a person goes inside the change room, okay. And from change room, he has to go into the control area. He passes through a vestibule. That is, you can say a, a passage. Job in the a passage. He passes through the passage. And while pass, passing through this passage, what he has to do is he has to open this door. He has to enter this vestibule. He has to close this door. Then again, he has to come over here. And they are what? They are electrically interlocked. Electrically interlocked means what? Unless and until this door is closed. Okay. This door is not going to open. That facility has been provided. So they are inter, uh, electrically interlocked with each other. If this door is open, just for example, by chance this door is open, then this door is not going to be opened by this person. If somebody, some person standing over is opening this door, then this door cannot be opened over there. So that the material from the change room do not enter into the control area. Okay. The, the clean environment in the control area remains clean. Right. So uh, this is what the uh, doors are electrically interlocked and the entry and exit uh, to a change room. So entry also through, is through a vestibule and exit is also through a vestibule. And th these doors are inter uh, electrically interlocked. Now, uh, now moving further. Okay. Now moving further. Uh, there should be facility for washing your hands and scrubbing all your hands and forearms, okay, inside the change room. There should be facility for dry and filtered head compressed air in order to dry your washed and scrubbed hand. There should be facility of dressing bench so that you can wear the garments that are required in order to enter inside the control room. There should be availability of aseptic gloves and sanitizers uh, inside the uh, change room, okay. And uh, it should be, there should be double door locking system from change room to your control area. The another thing that you uh, are the about the utilities, another facility that are required for, is about the utilities. Let us consider the piping system. Now the piping system should be such because uh, the water is passing through it. Some many a times your other uh, ingredients are passing through it. So it should be such that it should be uh, uh, it should be it should be cleaned initially also while you are installing it and it should be cleaned periodically okay usually you should avoid uh, overhead piping okay uh, because overhead piping they usually collect the dirt and it's very difficult for you to clean or they may leak also if you have uh, buried or concealed piping then also you have to do the demolition etc okay for cleaning and repairing work so they also should be avoided. So you should avoid the exposing of uh, piping to the overhead uh, area and also you should avoid the uh, concealed piping. Okay. But basically what you have to do is the piping system should be such that should be periodically cleaned and serviced. Right. The last uh, factor is regarding the personal flow. Now the personal flow should be properly controlled. Okay. Now, it should be the personal flow should be designed and planned in such a way that there is no dis, uh, there is no crisscrossing of the personals. Okay. 
the flow should be what continuous and it should be non crowded kind of a flow secondly you sh it should be efficient and it should be unsafe just for example as it is given over here if you are having a heavy focus passing through the same area where there is your movement of your people then it is going to be what it is going to be unsafe for your people right if your material is passing through the area where your heavy forklifts are passing then there will be uh, then the material are going to get what they are not going to pass easily through that path hence the path should be such that it should be efficient uh, and also it should be safe okay then what you have to do is uh, the pattern of flow should not be discontinuous or crowded okay if you if you see over here these are the pattern over here the person is passing from year to year he is passing from year to year so there is what crisscross he is passing from year somebody is crossing from year to year somebody is passing from year to year and and so on and so forth so this kind of a design is what it's a crisscross kind of a design this kind of a design should be avoided the personal flow should be such that the person from one is moving to two from two he can move to three and from three he can move to four okay so from area number one he can move to area number two area number two can move to area number three and area number three can move to area number four in no case area number three person can move to directly to area number one person okay this is not only going to have problem in uh, what you call that efficient moving or unsafeness but or crowding off but is also going to have problem in contamination okay so that is why the flow of the personal should be properly maintained okay so what what it can do a crowded flow or a discontinuous flow it can decrease the production efficacy it can increase the security problem most importantly there is going to be a problem of maintaining a clean environment hence the personal flow should be in proper unidirectional way okay in one direction there should be flow of the person